So I spent two years of um, my high school career at a predominantly black school and then two years at a high school that who was pre what was predominantly white. So when I transferred my 10th grade year, I, we had to do a project in front of the class. And I remember going up there and doing my project. I thought I did fairly well and things like that. And one girl pulled me out to the side when we're, the project was over and said, you know, you talk ghetto. You know, growing up in Madison County, all we knew were cows and chickens and trains going by at seven o'clock in the morning. So it was a, a little bit different, but going into school, um, I mean, we were always raised right. We knew not to, you know, judge anybody by the color of their skin or the way they talk, but you know, it, it starts to grow on you. Of course, going to a predominantly white school, everything was okay, but when it was time to go to other schools or go to different events, you know, you start to pick up on the way people talk. So I was always told that I, you know, talk white or talk different, but, you know, growing up, I mean, what is talking white? How, how does talking white sound? Or how does talking black sound? So it kind of made me more of a introvert because I don't want to be labeled as a a, a black person trapped in a, a, a white person body or vice versa and that's just what I got growing up. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> So first and foremost, um, I had wanted to go to an HBCU. I wanted to go to Clark Atlanta. Um, I had toured um, and th things happened where I was forced to go to Benedict College in South Carolina. And so, um, mind you, that's a big difference. Benedict is four hours away, five if you drive slow. And then Clark Atlanta, 45 minutes away from home for me. So in my mind, I said, well, I knew that this would be much different than what I've ever experienced. So going to Clark Atlanta, being near home, you know, if I get too overwhelmed and stuff, I can, I can come back home and it'll be fine. And so, um, my daddy had told me he was like, "You going to 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 South Car to South Carolina at Benedict?" And I don't care if you cry about it. So I cried, I cried for days. And it wasn't because I was scared about the HBCU. I was scared. I was scared because I was going to be away from home. It was such a, such a difference for me. I had never been in a classroom where I was the difference. I was the one who was looked at differently, who dressed differently, who talked differently, who act differently. I was the one, I was used to being part of the part of everyone else. So even simple things like basketball games or student activities, I always felt like I had to be outcasted because going to a predominantly black school, everyone was together. It was activities. It was the culture, the culture of being together, laughing, having fun, dancing, and being in a predominantly white culture, you were outcasted. You didn't do the things they did. You didn't, weren't interested in the same things they were interested in. And even as far as the teachers, you really felt like the odds were against you. I would wear country stuff or white people stuff and I would get picked on. It would it would be terrible. Like who who would know that you would get picked on in college? My brother had committed suicide like two weeks into college. I got picked on about that. Like nobody I never told anybody about how I got picked on because my black brother, something that's not um that's not in the I'm sorry, I don't mean to get emotional but something that's not in the that's normal at that time most definitely mental health and stuff I remember this girl I was like um I was like yeah my brother died she was like what happened did he get shot I was like nope I was like she was like what happened and um and uh, she was like he committed suicide I, I I said he committed suicide she was like and she looked at me like just complete disgust like I was weird my you know, I was already the outside person um in this I had already been picked on in this whole class I tried to make it funny um this guy was like she from a place where only four McDonald's of course he gonna commit suicide they it's full of white folk this boy told me that I never forget that and so when I left there I hated black people I I hated them I hated everything about my race I wanted to be back and bowed in Georgia. Eventually, you know, you get exposed to the cult, um, to what you're exposed to, and I kind of changed in a way. I still who who I still was who I was, but I 
I feel like over time I changed so I wouldn't be the outcast so I wouldn't be looked upon like you're different or why do you talk like that why do you, why do you dress like that why is your hair like that why is your interest in that so I feel like I changed over time and my friends groups did change I'm still friends with a lot of people I was friends with before I moved to the predominantly white area but I felt myself change myself and friends group as well but I mean for the most part is you live and you learn. I grew up and understood that, I mean, I was an educated person, it didn't matter how I sounded or anything. I was at school to get my education to, despite being at a, a redneck school or anything like that. So um, it was a lot, it was different, but it was fun growing up and being in that area and you know, being around different types of people and, and different types of cultures. I mean, that's what we experienced and it was fun. Now, I'm, I'm about to be 26 years old in June. And um, now as a, a black woman that's married with a black son, I wish that I would have embraced everything. And I did embrace it. Even though that I left there hating it, as I've grown, because then I was fresh, I was 18 years old, then I didn't know what I knew, what I know now about who I am. I embraced everything about the culture my hair, my skin, my son, I let him know that he's amazing, he's a king, and he'll be going to a predominantly black school. I will not allow him to have the feeling that he hates his own race because I was born, because he was raised in a place where everybody's white and they're right, or, or he's the one that's getting in trouble because he's the only black child in the classroom. I, I would never have him um, be raised up in a, in a place like that.